As with many of my projects, um, we're starting on the computer where I work most of my designs out. Um, different people do it different ways. Some people still like to use pen and pen, pencil, paper, uh, photocopier, however, but I do most of my designs on the computer. And I'm going to start this one by making a sheet the right size. So I have got the sizes here. We'll do the front panel. 150 by 248. Now I'll keep this quite quick. Sorry, that was open. Make sure this is in millimeters. And I want 150. It'll be roughly right by 248. Now that is the size. There it is of the front panel of the lantern and it's the viewable area between the sides the glass is a bit bigger because it goes behind but this is the viewable area and so I'll just very roughly show you what I did and I'll have a new layer there say okay that would be my border I'll, I'll I'll get that better right and say so that would then just go back as long as the um, glass goes for and the glass is going to go a bit further all around so we want to make that border that's okay there we go border there and then on another layer I've got my design uh, it's actually an old rainbow glass one I think what I'll do is copy that paste it into that new layer and I want to resize it think and I'll take the outside of that way so I can um, see my outside border see to the border see the border maybe a little bit bigger I think I'll be happy with that. And all I'm going to do now is rub away uh, from this the bits I don't want. Make that brush a bit harder. I think you can see roughly what I'm doing. Obviously, the next thing I, I do would be to uh, make that brush smaller, zoom in, and carry on deleting bits. I don't want in the image. So I won't make you sit through all of that. Um, I do have a finished piece here and there it is. And you can see all the bits I don't want have gone. I have changed it to green. Um, I find that quite important if I'm using a black outliner. If it's, if the design isn't done in black, I can then see very clearly where I have 
outlined and what, what I've missed out. If you're doing black on black, it can get a bit dodgy sometimes to see any areas you haven't done. So that's my design. I'll print it out, um, go and clean the glass, and I'll see you there. Okay, well as you can see, I've got my piece of glass, I've cleaned it, and I've blue tacked it onto the design. Now, all I need to do is outline it. If you've seen our site before, you'll know I like outlining out of the piping bag. Instructions on how to make it are on the site. I just find I get a lot more control with this than using a tube or a bottle or anything like that. Also, I can cut the end to the thickness of the line I want. It needs to be in proportion to the work you're doing. Let me just find some outliner. There we go. A reasonable amount of outliner in there. Doesn't matter if you put too much. You can put it back in the bottle and you've got left at the end. Don't think I'll have stuff left at the end though. I reckon this will probably take ooh, two or three piping bags. Fold away from the crease. It may start coming out at the end at this point, which in fact has done. I tend to keep a bit of paper around. Um, it enables me to knock off any odd bits like that and also test the thickness. And now I'm going to want it a bit thicker than that. So let's try there. Yeah, I reckon that'll be okay. It's about the thickness I want. So I'll bring my piece back. Starting in the middle, so I'm not going to be working over anything I've already piped. And it's Touch, lift, and let the line fall onto the piece. Now I will probably speed this up. These bumps are on purpose, by the way. Because I'll speed it up because I don't think you want to really sit there and watch every single line being piped. If you haven't done any outlining before, you may want to go and watch my videos on outlining. A couple of things, start in the middle and work your way out. Turn your paper or the whole design around frequently, both so you're not working over something you're already doing and you can smudge it. And the second thing is, or the third thing I should say, if you make a mistake, Just leave it, wait till it's hardened, and go back and cut it out. Trying to correct a mistake now while it's wet just makes things very, very messy. Keep on rolling your piping bag down as the amount of lead in it gets, liquid lead in it gets lower. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for now. I shall let that lot dry, get a new piping bag and do the outside, outside border. Okay, well that has now dried. Um, I'm a little bit impatient, so I don't know whether you can see this, but I've got a standard lamp there and I, I just put that old fashioned hot bulb, put that over it for half an hour and that's it dried. So all I need to do now is the outside. I think I'll probably put a line right on the edge as well, but I'll worry about that in a minute. So another piping bag. The old one got a bit overused. 
Make myself up another piping bag. Find my outliner if you're interested. Picked up my brush there as well. Uh, if you're interested, I'm using uh, plaid liquid lead. Well, liquid leading, it obviously doesn't have any lead in it. Sorry, my bag's just come apart. Together again. Um, doesn't have any lead in it obviously. Most outliners are, are much of a muchness. I find the way you apply it makes a lot more difference than the brand you use. Even if you're biting tubes I'd still recommend using a piping bag. Some bottles aren't too bad. The problem with tubes is they, they work a bit like um, toothpaste tube when you're cleaning your teeth. You can't actually stop the stuff coming out some of the time. Alright, just uh, check with my scrap bit of paper here. So the mouse. That's fine. Knock the end off. as straight as possible. If it breaks, don't worry, you can put your tip back on again and pick it up again. It does break sometimes because the liner gets air in it. get a bubble it breaks the line for you No need to worry too much about that outside outside bit because um, it's not going to be seen. Um, it's purely um, to hold the paint back rather than it coming off the edge. Now I'm going to be clever about this. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to just go around and mark on the outside where I'm going to have these lines coming in so it's roughly equal. All right, I'm going to do all that and then I'll show you the finished outlined piece. Okay, well, as you can see, I've finished this off fully with the border, broken it up into small sections, and I'm just going to leave that overnight until it's fully dry. Okay, as you can see, it's all nicely outlined now. I've taken it off to the Design I actually just turn the design upside down because I like working against a white background. There you are, you can see all dried and ready to paint. A uh, quick word about glass painting equipment paints. I'm going to use solvent based paints, they give the nicest finish, uh, in my opinion, and are well, the most transparent. Uh, Water-based paints are nice, but they don't tend to be as transparent as the solvent-based ones. I've got a little bit of a bump there, but we'll I'll worry about that in a minute. Make sure it works as flat as you can get it. If it's not flat, you'll get shading at one side where the paint flows. Brush. Now, that's my old brush, um, used for a long time. Uh, normal paintbrush, just good quality one so the hairs don't come out. However, nowadays I tend to use one of these, which is a solid paintbrush. 
like it for, for lots of reasons. One, it gets you into the habit that you're pushing the paint around. You're not brushing with it. You're flood filling and pushing. Two, it's remarkably easy to clean. Just one wipe and it's clean. So as I'm changing colours, uh, as you'll see in a minute, uh, there's no lengthy delay while I either clean brushes or, or get a second one. Keep a couple of cotton buds around. Great for mopping up any little bits of paint which get dropped in the wrong area as long as it's not already painted of course and a bit of kitchen towel let's take one sheet off there uh, which is going to be for cleaning out brush the paints I'm using are a, a, a cellulo cellulose based glass paint uh, by Rainbow Glass which is no longer available however I'm going to use a mixture of paints I'll we'll start with the rainbow stuff you can use a different make of paint as long as it's in a different section. Don't you try using a different make of paint in a same section for colour blending. It might not mix properly. Um, it depends on the base of the paint. So you're fine. You can even use water-based paints and solvent-based paints as long as they are in different sections of your work. Don't forget, turn your paper around frequently. At the moment it doesn't matter so much, but once you've painted one bit, you risk dropping another colour you don't want into that. And it doesn't matter whether it's uh, wet or dry at that stage, it's going to be a problem. Um, so try not to work over pieces, but you're going to. Also try not to paint two pieces next to each other until one of them's dry. So if I wanted to do that flower, leave that to dry and then do the leaves. Right, enough talk, let's get on. I'm going to start with the Kingfisher. I'm using turquoise blue for the main part. So dip and I say it's flood and you're pushing it up to the line. Make sure you get to the line. You are flood filling. Again, I'm not going to make you watch every single little bit of this. I will speed up in a minute. Make sure you get into the line. You may want to just slightly lift your glass, not too much, every now and then. See if there's a gap, I can see there's a gap there. Still see there's a gap there. There we are, that's gone. I'm going to carry on and do all this blue. You will find that the paint drops a bit as it dries. Not a problem. But if you think you're putting too much on, it will drop a bit as it dries. Now you can see I've done the blue parts. There, and I said about brush cleaning the brush few wipes, not worried too much about the metal. As you can see, oh, that brush is now clean. Right, need to leave that to dry, but whilst that's drying, I know I can do the leaves because they don't touch that blue at any stage. So I'm going to get on now and do the leaves. For the leaves I'm using two colours, well they're both green but two shades of green. This is a Kelly green.
And you see I've dropped a bit there. Because it's not in an area I'm going to paint in the near future, I'm going to leave it, let it dry, and take it off with a craft knife. Clean my brush. And this is a light green. Right, I'm quite happy about that. I'm going to leave all that to dry in a nice flat place and then come back and do a little, little more. And you just see there's one bit I've left out. I'm going to do it. That's the tail down here. That will drop, don't worry, as it dries. Right, I'll leave that to dry and come back in a bit. Right, I'm going to show you just painting one more bit because it's all basically the same technique. However, first of all, I'm going to get rid of that little accident there. Whoops, it's not quite dry enough. I'll take off what I can now. And I will have to go back and remove the rest of it when that bit underneath is totally dry. I think you can see from that I will be able to get rid of it. I'll just be a bit finickety. Notice there's a couple of other dots around, which will likewise need to come off. Right, assuming I'll be able to clean that up nicely. I'm just going to show you painting this one little bit, because it's another blend of two colours. Again, I'm going to use rainbow glass, but any solvent-based glass should be fine. So, this one I'm going to do in what they call flaming orange and in yellow. So here we go with the flaming orange. Now I know that needs to go in this bit here. Bit here. Now I'm going to put some at the top here. Yeah. And then I'm going to put some yellow beneath that. Clean my brush. Carefully, careful not to mix the two paints yet until I'm ready. So I'm not contaminating the paint in the jar. Now I'm ready. That 
should give a nice effect when dried. I'm just going to lift that up slightly and make sure I've got everything. Looks as though I have, apart from I need to get into the corner there a little bit more. I'm not very happy about that bit. I'm going to put a little bit more colour on that. There we go. Right, I'm now going to carry on and do most of the painting or the rest of the painting. I think the flowers are going to do red, brown for the branch and blues and purples probably around the outside. I'll come back when I've done that and it's dry. Well as you can see we're at the last stage of this piece. I hope you can see that clearly. A bit of reflection there. But I've finished off all the painting now. I could choose to leave it like that and most times I would but I just wanted to show you uh, uh, another effect you can get on your glass. You may have seen this before, you've seen the site. I'm using this which is gallery glass, glass crystal clear. Um, other makes available. And this is quite fun. Uh, for once we don't have to be too careful. In fact, if you are careful and make it too regimented, it looks wrong. Because all we're going to do is squish this around roughly on all the blank spaces. Just use it straight from the bottle like that. Don't worry if a little bit goes on the outliner. Make sure it goes up to the outliner. You don't want long gaps. Little bubbles don't matter. If you get a big bubble though, however, you can just pop it. You can see I'm doing it very roughly. I've got a paintbrush here, I'll put a little extra bit on there. And just use the paintbrush to get into these hard to reach places. Okay, I'm going to carry on and finish the whole piece just using this very squiggly technique. And that's it completed. You see it's white. All we do now is wait for it to dry. Okay, well this is virtually dry now. I uh, don't know if you can see there's a little bit yet to dry, but what was white has now gone clear and I'm hoping you can see that effect. It's giving it a mottled look, which I prefer in some cases to the plain glass. So that's our panel complete. If you think I've been slow with this, I have done four other panels. for the lantern. So the main one I've been showing you is the front, this is the back. And then we do have two side panels, which complement each other. So, all together, that should make a rather nice lantern. I'll go away put it together and show you the photograph afterwards. I hope you enjoy this project. All the designs will be available to download off the website, although obviously you may need to resize them for your own lantern. Happy glass painting.